What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 25 of the Intermediate Python tutorial series. In this video, what we're going to be talking about are args and quargs. Chances are, by this time, you've probably seen them, and if you don't know what they are, uh, they're actually super useful to use and to actually make your programs a lot more dynamic. But if you're not familiar with them, looking at programs that have them, you might be like, what the heck am I looking at? <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So for the most part, args and quargs, like you can think of args and quargs kind of like this. I see them compared to like lists and dictionaries and I'm going to do it, but they aren't the same. <laughs> your, 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 uh, your functions will not function identically to as if they were being passed lists and dictionaries, but you can kind of think of um, args and quargs like so. So you might have like a, a function of some kind and then you've got your regular named arguments. So blah, blah, blah. And then you've got uh, these args, which usually you'll see an asterisk and then args. Um, that's just a list of arguments. And just like a Python list, it can be as many items as you want. And then you've got quargs, and quargs are like a dictionary. And just again, like a dictionary, it can have as many things in the dictionary as you, you want. Okay, so args and quargs kind of function like that. These are keyword arguments that's the key w or k w args keyword arguments and then these are just arguments and it can be a list of any arguments uh but again it's not totally like a list in dictionary but i suppose it can be a useful way to think about it sometimes so let's say you've got a website we're going to just kind of we're going to use really simple code here i I'm not going to implement this necessarily into the kind of blob class that we've been working on in the series. Um, so let's just take like a really simple example. Like let's say you've got a blog and you're, you've got blog number one, of course, it's like a, I am so awesome or something like that most likely is what you're talking about. And then blog two, um, people like cars. So maybe you've got like this car blog. So cars are cool. And then, um, Maybe blog three is um, pictures of your cat. Okay, so those are your blogs. Now, you might have even more blogs, but for now, we're just going to say you've got three blogs. But later on, maybe you want to have the, the ability to have even more blogs because, let's be honest, you're so awesome. So, so let's start with uh, define blog uh, posts. And if you wanted a function that was going to take all your blog posts, you might just use args like so. And then what we could say is <clears throat> for post in args, let's just print the post. So now we can come over here and we can say blog posts. And let's say for now you just started your blog. You just have blog one. I know we wrote blog two and three already, but right now we just want to host blog number one. Maybe we want to go back and edit the cars and cat one. So we're save and run that. And what we get is just that one blog, I am so awesome. Now, later on, you decide, yep, I'm ready to publish the other blog. So blog two, blog three. Notice that th we're just throwing these in just like regular parameters here. Like we're just stuffing them on in there. We just have the args like this, right? So let's run it again and boom, it works. It, Args lets you just throw in an unlimited number of arguments. Crazy. So, interestingly enough, you actually can pass um, a regular, regular arg, and we'll just call this like the blog title. So, uh, we'll say my blog, right? Uh, and then we'll do, um, I hate to say blog title, I don't know, we'll say site title just so it's totally explicit what this is. Um, and then we'll say title and then args. So now we'll just pass site title here. And sure enough, this would, well, I'm telling you it's gonna work. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, we never printed, well, it worked, no syntax error, but let's also do print uh, title. There you go, my blog. And then you got all the, the you know, blogs under that. So it's pretty nifty that you can, have a function that just looks like this, and Python just knows, okay, the first parameter is gonna be the title. After that, all the other parameters are actually just part of args, <laughs> okay, and that's it. So now, let's say 
you wanted to have maybe um, you want to get basically the variable name and the contents of that variable. Well, in that case, you're probably going to be using keyword arguments, quargs. We'll keep the title there. Um, and then what we're going to do is for, and in this case, it'll be actually the title. Okay, we're getting ourselves into trouble here. <laughs> um, we'll say uh, P title for post title, I guess. Um, we're now going to print uh, P title post. Okay. And then let me clear, clean this up now. Um, now we have it's expecting keyword arguments. So, quar oops, and we also need two asterisks there. Somebody was yelling at the screen, I know it. Uh, anyway, blog one. Now, these are keywords. So, they're going to have their named, or I guess I don't want to say named arguments, but keyword arguments. That's the right word. So, blog one. And in fact, actually, what we can do, let's just take this cut, paste, uh, comma here, comma here. And let me just fix the uh, alignment. No, I guess we'll just do that. Okay. Now, save that, run it. Ah, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, quarks. And we need items. So it's like a dictionary kind of. So items, there we go. Third time's a charm, no problem. Anyway, you can see that um, that's how you can kind of iterate through any named argument if you really need the names of that argument. But a lot of times you, you are because you're going to want to have um, those values tied to something. So that's keyword arguments. Now, what's interesting with this is, like, for example, you could also tie in args just so we're totally clear. You can, a lot of times you're going to see functions that accept args and quargs at the same time. So title, um, I'm trying to think of something that we could have for args. Uh, I really don't know. So I'm just going to say for r in args print arg. I, I'm sorry, I just can't think of anything great. Um, so I'm just going to say one, two, and three. Uh, and we'll just run that. So just to see, okay, the regular typical parameter passed, then args was handled as we would expect, and then keyword arguments were handled as we would expect. So, okay. Now, one more way you can see args and quargs, um, mostly you'll see this probably with args, is in the following kind of situation. So maybe rather than seeing it this way, where in this case we actually defined args and quargs, um, in the function, <clears throat> and then when we actually called the function to happen, we passed regular variables, which really just looked like, okay, these are regular, all of these are just typical, and these were just named parameters um, that maybe had some default values or, or something like that, or, or we're just trying to be explicit because the actual value that we're passing here, um, we, might, we don't know what that is. So if we're gonna look back at our code later on, it's helpful to name some variables just so you know what these random numbers are, like one, two, and three. What are those, what are those numbers, right? Whereas here, we, we know, okay, this is block one, two, three, and so on. Anyway, uh, let me, we're just going to delete that. And let's say instead, now, you actually have, let's do, whoops, let's do uh, define a graph operation. And a graph operation takes x's and y's. Now, um, let's just go ahead and print, um, just in case someone doesn't have matplotlib, you could say this is a function that graphs... And and then we'll do a format string x string y. So um, that will print out basically something that graphs these things. So now let's say you have x equals one, two, and three, and then you're going to have a y that equals a two, three, and a one. Now uh, what you could say is print uh, let's say, uh, or actually we don't need to print because we're printing in that. So let's just call graph operation x, y. Um, I kind of want to say, like, let's call it x1 and y1 just so we're really explicit in what we're passing here. So we'll save and run that. And sure enough, 
that that works totally fine. And if you don't have matplotlib, don't worry about it. But I'm gonna go ahead and import um, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And I'll keep that printing. And if you don't have matplotlib, that's totally fine. Just keep it printing. I'm gonna print xy plt.show. Okay. Um, and we'll get a graph. Okay, great. So graph as expected. Now what's interesting though is actually what we can say is something like this. We could say graph me equaled uh, x1, y1. And now graph me is a list. And in graph operation, we can actually say, um, rather than passing x1 and y1, I just want to pass some arguments. And those arguments are graph me. Now again, in the, the definition of this function, we did not say this takes args. We said these are the two arguments we want to take. It's not some unlimited number. These are the exact arguments. So what we can do here is uh, run it though. And we see we get the exact same output. Everything works as intended. So this is yet another way that you can actually use the args. Um, I'm not entirely certain I would recommend you do this all of the time, but I have seen people do it because you can do it. And a lot of times if you're like writing out the same thing over and over in a bunch of functions, like the same list of parameters, this can be like an easy way to stop doing that. Um, but for the most part, this is not explicit. So if someone sees that, okay, we're running graph operation and then we're running these args, what are these args? They got to like go back and stuff, but just know it's possible and you might see it. So anyways, that's it on args and quargs. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you've got something cool you want to show us, uh, leave it below. Otherwise, I'll see you in another tutorial.